It is okay as a leader to not be the best at everything. As a matter of fact, you're probably not the best at a majority of what you do. You probably are an expert in one, two, three, or maybe four areas, but how many different areas of business are there? move on to section six here. This is going to be effective delegation. Now, this is for leaders. This is for really anyone, because if you're in a place that you could potentially be delegated a task to, it's not necessarily a bad thing. That's how we move up in ranks. Now think about this. A lot of people aren't willing to do this small tasks in order to grow. They think, Hey, day one, week one, heck even year one, I'm above that. Make sure with whatever position you're in, you really analyze this because this is a great opportunity to really be able to grow who you are and what you're doing. So the first thing is, what is delegation? It is the process for assigning responsibility to a task or action. So who are we going to be assigning these tasks to? It could be someone less senior than you. Heck, it could even be a peer or maybe even someone who is working above you. And if you do it right, you can sometimes get away with it. And sometimes it's just the right thing to do. The next thing is it might be someone that just has a better skill set than you. It could be, you know, someone who is less senior, someone who's a subordinate, but their skill set might be stronger than you. Yours. For example, me, I'm not the most creative person when it comes to like marketing or these like genius ideas. I'm more direct. So if I was going to be running this really cool ad campaign and I wanted some creativity in there, I might assign a task to someone who's not been in the company as long as I have, or maybe even has a position lower than I am, but their mind and what they do, how they think just works better for the task. Leaders, you can drop your ego here. You don't have to have an ego. Someone might be better than you. Often they are. What tasks are we assigning? These are going to be tasks that are time consuming. These are going to be tasks that are routine. So things that, you know, maybe some data entry, maybe you're building a spreadsheet and you kind of jacked it up earlier, or maybe it's just an old process that you haven't updated yet, but you've got to get the information from this medium to this medium. And it's just simple copy paste, busy work. It's going to take eight hours to do, and your time is going to be better spent doing X. So if it's time consuming and it's easy, but it is crucial, you can go ahead and delegate that tasks that are routine, things that are done every single day and are not 911 critical, important, or even as you you go on and develop relationships, they might be critical tasks, but things that you do every single day that someone can come in and just knock it out for you. For example, at the Elliot Group, we have chores that we have to do. We are each responsible for maybe mopping this section of the building, vacuuming this section, cleaning the glass here. Well, let's just say I bring on an assistant to help me with a million other things. Maybe that becomes one of their tasks because I am paying someone to do that so I can go do something else. And finally, I'm going to go back to it. Better skill set. Do not overlook this one. It is okay as a leader to not be the best at everything. As a matter of fact, you're probably not the best at a majority of what you do. You probably are an expert in one, two, three, or maybe four areas, but how many different areas of business are there? Hundreds. So it's okay not to be the best. And maybe someone's a little bit better than accountability or accounting than you. They're a little bit more detail oriented than you are. And you're more of that creator, that person that's just out there and like, you're just running at a hundred miles per hour. But when it comes down to sitting down and crunching numbers, you hate it. Guess what? Let them run your accounting. Let them run your spreadsheets. Heck, let them uh, even check out your statement from time to time. When we're looking for the right person to really delegate a task to, there's a couple things that we definitely need to choose. We don't just want to throw out random tasks and say, hey, here, complete this, here, complete that without any sort of logic to it. You want to choose the right person. You're going to base this you know, person on their skill set, their experience, and their current workload. If you need something done accurately and to the best of ability, you don't want to assign it to the person who's already putting in 15 hours, who doesn't have a second to breathe, who's already cutting their lunch. Now that person, you might want to delegate or help them delegate some of their tasks, but you want someone who could achieve it at a high level and get it done. You also want to look at their skill set and experience. Don't take the brand new person and give them a, a level 10 skill set or give them a level 10 task when they're operating on a two. You're going to want to give them a three and a four and let them grow into it because it's going to build trust in a relationship. And anytime you delegate a task, and this is how you grow people th through delegating tasks is you build the trust in relationship and you're mentoring them up. So if they're at a two, you give them a three, you teach them to do a three. If they start doing really, really well at that, you go to a four and a five and so on and so forth. And also if you're not in a leadership position and you are being delegated a task, even if you don't get paid for it, it's usually worth doing if it's a meaningful task, because no one's going to give you a raise based on your current skill set. No one's going to give you a promotion. No one's going to give you more responsibility just based on what you're currently doing. So if you're currently operating at that two and you want to get to that seven level, well, you're going to have to do some threes and some fours and some
some fives. And the best and quickest way to get to that seven is go ahead and knock out some of those threes, fours, and fives. Don't wait for someone to pay you to do it. Go above and beyond and get it done. Don't get caught waiting. The next portion is as a leader and even as yourself, you have to set clear expectations. Because if you don't have clear expectations, one, go back and analyze, go back to a few modules and analyze, is this task that I'm delegating even worth doing? You would be surprised how many redundant tasks I see business owners do over and over or even delegate to a subordinate and the subordinate get but burns out and then they realize why they can't keep anyone in that position. Well, you're just delegating them busy work. Busy work doesn't need to be done 90% of the time and you can identify what that is and either replace it using technology or just wipe it out of the process to begin with. You need to be able to set clear expectations. You need to be able to tell them what to do, how it's supposed to be done, what the outcome of the activity is supposed to achieve and also make sure they have the necessary resources to do it. If they don't have the necessary resources, you might have someone that go figure it out, go find the resources. That's going to be a higher level player. But a lot of times, like for example, if it's data entry and you don't have a computer for them, what are they going to do? Write it out on pen and paper? A little bit of a crazy freaking, you know, example there, but you'd be, you'd be surprised. Sometimes when we don't think and we just get busy and we just start assigning left and right, sometimes we miss those little itty bitty steps that could make the job a heck of a lot easier and get it done a lot quicker. And then the next thing is you have to inspect what you expect. And it goes back to eliminating tasks. If it's not worth inspecting, is it really even worth doing? Or does a human need to do it? Because you might once again be able to replace it with technology. You might be able to use some system that can knock it out. So when you delegate tasks, it doesn't just have to be human, it could be technology as well. But if it's not worth inspecting, it's probably not worth doing or it's probably not worth assigning to a human. So keep that in mind, inspect what you expect. This is how you're going to effectively analyze what tasks you can delegate, who to delegate them to, and make sure you have clear goals for that person so they know when they're winning, so they know when they fall short. And that way, when you do inspect what you expect, you're able to go back and say, hey, did you do A, B, and C? Well, no, I missed D or I missed B. And then you look at them and say, well, we went over that and you're able to correct. But if you don't give them the outline, if you don't give them the expectation and you just say, hey, why didn't you get that? And they give you, well, I don't know. That's on you. It's not always on them. So make sure you're an effective delegator. Make sure you're doing it right with the right people. And let's move on to seven.